Good morning. Merry Christmas to you. This is Tim Lampley. Uh, in the fall uh, 2018 COM 510 course with Dr. Melissa Naomi Tingle. Uh, this is the week eight critical assignment presentation that is due. Uh, presentation outline here is a, an introduction. We'll cover that. Uh, within that, we'll cover the statement of purpose and rationale, uh, theoretical framework, and research question. Uh, we'll also cover uh, briefly the literature review. We'll go over the methodology, and within that, we'll cover procedures, sample, and instrument used to gather data, and then, of course, data analysis. Uh, we'll cover the results and couple that with uh, the discussion, uh, which covers limitations and delimitations, and then we'll offer a conclusion and talk about implications for future research. So let's go ahead and get started. The statement of purpose for this is to investigate the methods of communication that churches use to process new members into their fellowships. Okay. The research rationale is that church leaders find themselves within a conundrum. And when I say that, I mean to say that they have to walk a tightrope, if you will. They, they have a solid responsibility to warmly welcome people who seek to live out their faith in the community of believers. Unfortunately, they also have to exercise discernment against predators who would seek to sow discord, strife, and worse in that same community. So the theoretical framework is the use of the uncertainty reduction theory of communications. Uh, this is a communications course, and it was required uh, to couple or bind uh, this research effort in with communications, and that was the theory that was used. It was developed by Charles Berger and his colleagues. And a summary definition of URT, as it'll be um, identified by throughout the rest of this presentation, is that URT seeks to investigate and understand how two unfamiliar communicative agents seek to decrease that unease through the use of certain strategies designed to build rapport and acquaintanceship. As familiarity increases, uncertainty decreases. So uh, just a quick review. Uh, of how uncertainty reduction theory works. When two communicative agents or people uh, come together and they're unfamiliar with one another, there is a certain level of uncertainty. If they have to, to some degree, interact and connect with one another, in their uncertainty with one another, they will seek information out from the other in order to build rapport, establish connections, raise affiliation, or attraction as it's called within URT. And when that raises, when that information uh, causes a connection or rapport to build between the two, and affiliation and attraction increases, uncertainty decreases, and the need to probe for more information also subsides. Now, in the converse, if uncertainty levels were high and continue to increase, uh, maybe because of uh, behaviors or different manifestations that the other person just saw that as a strange or unpredictable, uh, that would cause uncertainty to increase. And in that case, even uh, particularly if uh, connections or interaction was necessary, then more information would be asked in order to assuage those um, that uncertainty uh, that the person is feeling. Okay, let's go ahead and move forward. So, moreover, URT can offer church leadership some viable and potent recommendations to, like I said, assuage, okay, or relieve their doubts without compromising their responsibilities. So, that's really, really important uh, for elders who find themselves in a situation where they want to welcome new members, but want to make sure that they're welcoming people that are going to uh, contribute and benefit instead of so discord and cause damage. Uh, URT strategies uh, are very helpful tools for church leaders to implement in lowering uncertainty and helping to determine that these people or ver these various people can be brought into the church, okay? So the research question is, what specific communication methods can church leaders utilize to reduce uncertainty of potential membership candidates when engaging in the membership process? 
So in regards to literature review, uh, there's good news and then there's better news. So the good news is in regard to the amount of studies for either URT or church membership, there are plenty. Those abound. Uh, there are, are plenty of case studies. There are plenty of research and, and studies that are available. However, they either deal with URT specifically in its various contexts of um, exploration and description, okay, or the church membership uh, information, although there are quite a few uh, research studies available for them, uh, those are generally involved um, with uh, polling uh, or they're involved with um, uh, almost secular means, which is to say uh, organizational uh, theories and methods are really connected uh, to those stu those studies, okay? So the better news is, is that the amount of studies that directly connect URT and church membership issues, particularly within the idea of how to uh, reduce uncertainty, uh, those amount of studies, well, they're very sparse. There's not a lot of them at all, actually. Uh, having done uh, quite a bit of due diligence on that. Why is that better? Well, that's better because it creates an opportunity and an open field for additional research and theory development. Uh, there's a huge amount of opportunity, particularly within faith-based uh, genres uh, where decisions in those realms and domains need to be made. Uh, it's an open field so that either URT can be augmented uh, or maybe even a fragment uh, or a fragmented of that or a sub-theory of URT can be created or maybe even just a, a fresh um, single theory, if you will, uh, or new theory uh, could be created. Okay, let's continue. So as far as data collection is concerned, <clears throat> the primary research method involved, of course, was the qualitative approach to gathering data and analysis. That is a non-numerical approach, uh, which is mainly involved in using intensive interviewing uh, and documentary strategies. Well, those are the two uh, methods that, or tactics that I chose uh, to collect and uh, analyze the data. Okay. Um, moving forward with data collection, uh, the intensive interviewing that I did, I had two interviews. Uh, the first interview was with a church leader. The test population is the Emmaus Reformed Baptist Church located in Hemet, California. They have a very formal process of church membership. Uh, the second interview that I had was with a church member uh, that had been, has been a member for about three years and went through the process successfully. So uh, two different interview guides were created uh, for both of them. Uh, each one consist was a semi-structured interview. So questions were prepared beforehand with several probes that were available to open up uh, the realm of questioning and to, um, to get more details or accentuate those answers uh, to get, gather more information. <clears throat> And then, of course, there was the documentary research strategies. So I was very um, thankful uh, to discover that Emmaus Reformed Baptist Church has an extensive document collection. Uh, it's very well maintained. It's super organized. And it made the manual process of documentation research easier. So those documents were divided into the foundation documents. So foundation documents, I further divided into core documents and supporting documents. The core documents, of course, were the church's constitution. And since they're a confessional congregation, looking at the 1689 Second London Baptist Confession. Supporting documents would have included things like um, the Chicago Statements, uh, which were involved with a biblical inerrancy and uh, hermeneutics, which I thought was important because their main premise for church membership and, and their argument for church membership is that it's directly uh, expressed within or, uh, or explicated within the scriptures for a formal church membership process. So I wanted to look and see what they thought about the Bible, pointing to the Bible, and see how 
uh, strong the connection was between those two. <clears throat> so looking at the data analysis methods, I used the grounded theory method. Uh, and I used uh, coding. So there's various types of coding or different levels, if you will, of coding that are used. Uh, I used uh, open coding, axial coding, and selective coding. So uh, within this, um, there are various strategies. Uh, because it was a communication theory, uh, I took the coding that I refined through those three uh, styles uh, or processes of coding and further refine that information to categories according to the communication theory. So I have some samples here uh, that are available. Uh, forgive me, I'm running a little long-winded and, and, and I'm out of time uh, for this. So I'm gonna uh, speed up here noticeably. Uh, I took the raw uh, coding that I did through the documents and then used uh, further open coding to refine and group those concepts of church membership that we're repeating. Uh, after that, I used axial coding, which is defined as core concepts in the study, uh, which are marked in blue. I further grouped those and then identified the core concepts. And then I used selective coding uh, to find the central code in the study. That is to say the one code that all the others connect to. And that would be the membership requirements, a credible profession of faith in Christ, uh, since it's a Christian church, uh, baptism upon credible profession of faith, living in accordance with profession of faith, general agreement with church doctrine, willingness to be taught, and honesty to contact elders regarding doctrinal diff differences or misunderstandings. Okay, so the major findings of the study uh, are as the results, and those are here. So there are actually effective and specific communication strategies that exist for church leaders to implement, to walk that tightrope. Uh, the more formal the system that was discovered uh, by the results, the more benefit they can receive from URT strategies. Okay, And then of course, incorporating URT strategies assist church leaders with walking the welcoming slash warding tightrope uh, that they have. Now, of course, uh, this is more important to church leadership that implement a more formal process or have a high view of church membership. Those that don't, uh, that either don't have a membership process or a considerably more casual one, while still having some benefit, but while still being able to benefit, excuse me, uh, through the use of URT strategies, probably wouldn't find those as necessary as someone with a more uh, formal uh, guarding process. Okay, so there were some limitations and we'll cover those very quickly. Uh, one, there was only one church used within the sampling. It would have been helpful uh, to um, use multiple churches, uh, different denominations, and even different uh, perspectives of church membership from those uh, of no process to a casual process all the way to a formal process. The one that I used has a very formal process. Um, only the leader and the current member, and a current member, excuse me, were interviewed. It would have been helpful to have uh, candidates or prospective members that were interviewed. And then last, um, only the qualitative research approach was used. It would have been helpful uh, to use a quantitative approach, maybe a phone survey. Um, a phone interview would be qualitative. A phone survey would be quantitative and, uh, and just maybe giving out a survey. Uh, and gathering that information and calculating that would have been helpful. Okay, so let's move to the conclusion. So in concluding, the takeaways for this would be that uncertainty is inevitable and natural when meeting the unfamiliar. Now, one thing that is a takeaway uh, that I learned, probably a, a discovery, an alternative discovery uh, in the results is that uncertainty is actually useful. Uh, particularly with those that have a formal membership process because it promotes caution and in making those decisions as they go along their process you more tightly consider the impact of your decisions okay uh, one way or the other whether it is to let someone in or whether it is to or whether it is to receive someone into membership pardon me uh, that would be the formal expression or whether it is to deny that process or to prolong or to delay you know that, that process, okay? Uh, uncertainty is useful to promote caution. 
Another uh, takeaway would be that URT strategies can actually and definitely help church leaders decrease uncertainty. And uh, from the uh, pastor that I interviewed, uh, he, the, he, he made a statement that was very thoughtful. He said that uncertainty, quote, never goes away altogether. Another part of that is that he also said that elders need to learn to live with a certain amount of uncertainty. I found that to be very, very helpful. So my name is Tim Lampley. Uh, this is the uh, last and final assignment and presentation for the course, COM 510. I've had a great time in this course. Uh, it is very rigorous. It is very demanding. Uh, but I have come out on the other side a different person, particularly in regards to research. Of course, I guess I'll have to wait and see the grade if that to, to judge the accuracy of that method. But uh, I, I'm very super thankful for the opportunity. Thank you much and Merry Christmas.